trends. Solids are generally more soluble at higher temperatures. So again, solids, higher temperature, more soluble. Soluble means we can dissolve more as the temperature goes up. As a matter of fact, if you're in the kitchen and you want something to dissolve, usually we heat it up. Gases, though, are more soluble, not at higher temperatures, but instead at lower temperatures. Now, graphing is important. It kind of helps us understand things. This is a graph of the solubility of gases. We have oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, xenon, and CO2. And for all of these, temperatures are lower here. We can see that they, for if we look at the xenon here, the green line starts up, you know, it's soluble, but as the temperature goes down, the gas becomes less soluble. So that's an important uh, distinction between gases. Then we have solids. And generally speaking, solids are more soluble as temperature increases. Now, it doesn't mean always, right? But if you look, calcium iodide, sodium nitrate, again, we have varying degrees of increasing, but generally speaking, they will increase. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, things to note. Temperature is on the x-axis, and on the y-axis is grams of solute per 100 grams of water. That's a very important thing to note right there, that this is the, the mass of the solute per 100 grams of water. All right, we're gonna work with the graph. We're gonna do some practice problems, and I'm going to show you explicitly what our expectation is for you in terms of verifying your work on a graph like this. So here's our first problem. How many grams of sodium nitrate are soluble in 100 grams of water at 30 degrees Celsius. So what we're gonna do, well, I'm gonna go ahead and say, so sodium nitrate, we're gonna come here, here's the line for sodium nitrate. Uh, we're gonna go to 30 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna follow that up to where it hits the line. We're gonna come across. Now remember, this is grams per 100 grams. So coming up at 30, coming across, we can see that that's going to be approximately 95 grams. But let me show you how we expect the work to look. We were given 100 grams of H2O, and now the graph says that for every 100 grams of H2O, we would have about 95 grams of NaNO3. So doing this, our 100 grams of water is going to cancel and our answer is going to be 95 grams of NaNO3. And we're going to box that out. All right. So let's look at the next problem. How many grams of potassium chlorate are soluble in 100 grams of water at 15 degrees Celsius? I modeled the last problem. This one is very similar. Stop now and answer this question. Okay, so we're back and uh, we're going to start with our 100 grams of water. You're going to look at the graph. We're going to go to 15 degrees Celsius. We're going to find the line for potassium chlorate. So let's see, KClO, it's KClO3, not there, NH4, there we go. So here's a line for KClO3, right? So we're gonna go to 15 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna come across here. So doing that, for every 100, again, the 100 grams is right here. For every 100 grams of water, we would say approximately, right, we were at 15, approximately eight grams of KClO3. And so our answer is eight grams can dissolve. All right, again, this is how you need to show your work on the exam. How many grams of ammonia are soluble in 200 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius? Think about how this problem is different than the last problem. I'm gonna go ahead and have you stop 
try this out. Hopefully you recognize that this problem gave you 200 grams of water. So we're going to start with 200 grams of water this time. We're going to go to 80 degrees Celsius and our ammonia line. So here is our ammonia line. And so we're gonna to go to 80 degrees, we're gonna come up where it hits, you're gonna come across, and we're gonna say for every 100 grams, there's approximately 14 grams of ammonia. And so the answer is going to be 28 grams of ammonia can dissolve. How many grams of potassium nitrate are soluble in 500 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. All right, if you didn't get the last one right, maybe you'll get this one right. Go ahead and stop now and try it. All right, so again, uh, we have 500 grams of water this time. So we're gonna start with that 500 grams. You're gonna go to our graph of potassium nitrate and 20 degrees Celsius. So there is our KNO3 right here. So we go 20, the KNO3. We're gonna come across, it looks like it's about 35, 32 works, um, and there you go. Do our multiplication, grams of water cancels. We are left in 160 grams of potassium nitrate and dissolve. All right, one more problem. If you try to dissolve 150 grams of ammonium chloride in 200 grams of water at 70 degrees Celsius, then how much will remain undissolved? All right, now this one's a little bit different. Why don't you think about that? Go ahead and stop and see if you can figure it out. All right, well what we wanna do is we're gonna take our 200 grams of water that's given and we're gonna find out how much ammonium chloride can be dissolved at 70 degrees Celsius. So using your graph, you're going to come up to ammonium chloride, which is right there. You're gonna come across, and it looks like it's about 60 grams. So for every 100 grams, it's going to be 60. So I know I can dissolve 120 grams. That's it. After that, it's gonna be solid down at the bottom of my container. Now we wanna compare that to how much we actually have, and we can see that if we're given 150 grams, and I can dissolve 120, how much is going to be sediment at the bottom? It's going to be about 30 grams of ammonium chloride will be left over. All right, good luck. Do these practice problems and have a great day.